Okay, we were talking about Green's theorem. That concerns the circulation of a vector field. And we talked about that a little bit before, but let me review that. You've got a closed oriented curve. You always need an orientation on the curve to define the, the line integral of a vector field. And it's going to be closed. That's the case we're interested in. And we take the integral of that vector field along the curve, like in the picture. And that gives an idea of how much this, say it's a fluid, for example, how much that's circulating along this curve. So it's a total measure around this whole curve of the curliness or rotation of the vector field. Now, the reason we have first talked about this was that if the vector field is conservative, then if it's the gradient of a, of a potential function, then all of these are going to vanish. One word for that is irrotational. There's no curliness or rotation or circulation around any curve, no matter how large or how small. But, and so that's going to be an interesting special case, but we're going to be interested in all the other cases as well. Now, usually if you have a closed curve, it's the boundary of some two-dimensional region. We're all in the plane here. We'll get into three-dimensional space later. Well, so the region is going to be D. And its boundary, remember we use the partial derivative kind of symbol to also denote boundary, its boundary will be C. Now, we'll, we'll think about if there's as tight a connection as we might think between regions and their boundaries and closed curves in, in a minute, and we'll keep coming back to that idea. But first, let's just assume we have a nice region D, and we have its boundary. Well, first of all, there's a convention that's very important. We always orient C. We don't actually have a choice as to how to orient C. If we call it the boundary of a region, we always orient it in the same way. That is, we orient it so that if we're walking around, if we're a little guy walking around, I'm a little guy here, if we're walking around the curve, then he always keeps the, uh, the region on his left. You can tell it's his left because he's missing his left arm, um, left hand. That's not my fault, that's my son's fault. Okay, So that's the convention. Now usually, that means counterclockwise. But I'll let you think for two seconds about whether it always means counterclockwise for a boundary. Well, here's a couple of questions I want to get in the air right, right away, even though we'll kind of come back to them more later. First of all, can the can C, the, the boundary curve, have more than one piece? Well, there's one really easy way that it could have more than one piece. And that is that the region, D, could have more than one piece. So here's a region with three pieces, and it's got three boundary curves. They're all going counterclockwise around the outside edge of this region. Well, here's the answer to this usually counterclockwise question. If you have a region that has a hole in the middle, like an annulus, like this thing, then uh, the boundary curve can have two components, even though D is connected. It only has one piece to it. And notice that if I walk around this inner thing, keeping the region D on my left, I'm actually going clockwise. So any inner boundary the, the, where there's a hole in D, you're actually going to be going clockwise. And that's a very important convention to make all our theorems work out in the right way. Now, another very important qualitative question is, uh, is every curve, every closed curve, you draw a closed curve in the plane, is that the boundary of some region? And the answer is it depends. It is true if we're in R2, if we're in the plane, and by that I mean that we haven't removed anything. We haven't declared anything to be out of bounds or illegal. It's false if we do remove a point or a lot of other things. So here's the picture. If we remove a point, this dotted, these little dotted uh, dots indicate that we removed that point. That is not in our space at all. We're not allowed to go there you, to even think about it. It's just not, it doesn't exist. The reason we are going to do that, by the way, is often that we're going to have a vector field that is really nasty there, that maybe blows up and can't be defined there. But if we just agree that that's not in our space, if we draw a closed curve around that, that is a closed curve that is not the boundary of some region, because if you try to stretch the fabric of the region D across this wire frame, say, you're going to have to use that point. So. The way we say that, we've talked about this issue as, as well a little bit, is that R2, the plane minus a point, is not simply connected. 
And this is one way to express that it. it's not simply connected, that you can have a closed curve that's not a boundary. Technically, that's a little tiny bit different from simply connected, but that's what that's good enough for us. Those are topological issues. These issues of holes and pieces and numbers of pieces and connected and simply connected. These are all topology issues, and we're we're going to come back to those in uh, in interesting ways as we go. Okay.